Hey, three, two, one, live. We are live on the Mark Hoke Show, and this is going to be another one of those nights that uh, I don't have a producer because he has a family, and uh, he is doing his family stuff, and I am doing my host stuff, but I don't, uh, I don't really know how to do the, the. Uh, technical stuff that Daniel normally does for me, but I, I sure do appreciate when I have him around. And I, uh, I just want to kind of touch base with you guys at the regular time and let you know that uh, we're going to have a regular scheduled show next Monday. And we've got a couple of really cool guests that we've got lined up for you guys. Um, we're going to interview uh, Larry the founder of Tokyo Joe's. And he's going to give us some insights into what he's done with his business career. He's got a lot of really neat things to talk about as far as, you know, some things that you might not know that he's done. And he's going to share some of his insights and some of his successes and failures with you business people out there. And then we're going to do another call-in segment um, on the other half of that. But I've also got some people that are going to be uh, coming from Phantom 8 Tattoo. They're a new sponsor to the show. And uh, they have been doing a uh, tattoo business here in Denver on Broadway for some time. And like I said, I will, uh, you know, put some uh, notes. It's my wife telling me that it sounds okay. Um I'll be putting some show notes in for everybody um, about some of the sponsorships. Of course, Action Computers is uh, our biggest sponsor, and they uh, they uh, are always doing stuff for us. We just got together about 10 laptops that we're going to be giving to uh, the Rotary in Niger um, for some of the, the – uh, club members here in Parker and the, uh, the insurance agency, um, Josh Martin and uh, the uh, insurance advisors are helping us get these computers together and there'll be some uh, video on that as well as, uh, you know, where that's going, talk to some of the guys about what they're doing. Brain, I love you too. I, lo I love you every day. Um, so I'm just going to do a short show. I don't. I, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and I was meeting with somebody earlier today, and we were talking about a lot of his growth that he's made in uh, the area of finances and what to do to hold on to your money. And you know, he he was talking about these baby steps that you have to take. Where a lot of times, if you haven't learned what to do with money that maybe even if you're given money you don't get to keep the money and so i asked him a question i said well let's you know let's kind of test you know where you've where you've grown and and i said let's say that you want a million dollars what would you do with it and uh he talked to me about the things that maybe he would do and some of the things that he would consider and and i'll share you with you my answer and my answer is if i won a million dollars today i would pay the taxes on it so i'd end up with about seven hundred thousand bucks then what i would do with that seven hundred thousand dollars is i would take it and i would buy income producing real estate assets and if i'm doing it right and i'm getting about 10 percent of my money back um from that investment every year every month then, you know, I'm looking at about $7,000 a month that's streaming towards me. And then I would take that $7,000 and I would let that go into an account that takes care of the expenses and the repairs or whatever. And I would let that build up to be a year of money in that account. And then after that, I would go ahead and take that income, that $7,000 a month income, and live on that forever. And this is truly a case where you can eat your cake and have it too. 
And, and normally that that phrase goes with well, you if you do eat your cake, then you don't, don't get to have it. But if you get money in your hand and then you spend it, then it's gone. You know, it's into a depreciation, a depreciating asset like a car or a motorcycle or a vacation or a boat or whatever, and it's gone. But if you spend that money on a firm income producing asset like a rental house or an apartment building or a strip center or something like that, you get to keep the asset and you get to spend the money you just run it through that filter of that asset before you spend it. And then you're building generational wealth. That kind of wealth takes care of you into your old age. It takes care of, you know, you hand it down to your kids and we, we don't think about things in that way enough. And we get on these treadmills with a bunch of debt and we end up, you know, actually going backwards. And the analogy that I was using when I was talking to this guy I was talking to today is we go through with this parachute on our back and we're trying to go forward. And it's just so hard to go forward because we got this parachute of debt on our back. And, you know, so we take one, two, three steps forward and then two steps back because of this debt. So the first thing we do is we take care of the debt and we start clipping the strings of that, that parachute that are holding us back until pretty soon we're under our own power and we don't have any debt. Then we kind of get a little cart going and we're moving the cart forward. And then we actually reverse that effect by putting a little donkey on the front of our cart. And now we make four steps and the little donkey makes a step. And so we're getting five steps and then another one gets hooked up to the front and uh berkowitz says that a warehouse in denver is the way to go i have a couple of those the marijuana growers have brought up and offered double the rent on all the warehouses well you may be a little bit behind the curve there berkowitz that that's kind of come and gone but uh it was a good idea when it was happening. Um, just word to the wise, that's going to be happening in Oklahoma next. And that's that's for another show, but that that is going to happen next. And, and the people that are listening to me are going to make big money if they're investing in Oklahoma. And uh, so um, then we hook up another little horse to our wagon and we're going forward. And each little bit of that money that we get um, if we can apply those same rules like we would the lotto win, we, uh, it's not going to be a million bucks, but it is 25,000 bucks or it's 30,000 bucks. And what I prescribe is limited liability companies and people going in on properties and not including the bank because if we get the bank involved. You know, we've got, uh, $150,000 property, let's say that we rent it for $1,200 a month and the bank gets $800 a month for the payment. So we're making $400 a month. And then out of that $400 a month, we've got to pay $100 a month in insurance and $100 a month in taxes. So we're making $200 a month, taking all the risk, and then the water heater goes. And now we've got to install it ourselves and the bank wants their money. They want their 800 bucks every month. So, um, yeah, Jeff Myers from Action Computers is checking and he's the one I had a conversation with. Um, but if four people go in and then they invest their money together, each one of them $35,000 each and, you know, then we we'll end up doing $140,000 investment or splitting it four ways. Now we've got the rent coming in at $1,200 a month. Each partner gets $400 a month themselves and the banker gets nothing. And that's who, that's what I like the banker to get. Whenever I'm in a deal, I like the banker to get nothing. I like the partners that are in the transaction to get all the money. Then one person is skilled at marketing. One person skilled at, 
you know, another part of the rehab or painting or dealing with the renters or whatever, but everybody's working. And then when the water heater goes out, instead of losing all of our profits for a year, each one of the partners gives up 200 bucks out of their share of the monthly rent. And we replace the water heater and we move on. And there's strength in numbers. You know, you're, you don't have to worry so much because you've got a smaller, you've got a smaller risk and there's other people that are in it with you, especially if you're choosing your partners well and they're good people and you start to form these relationships and you're, you're checking out these markets and it becomes a nice little side gig. And you know how we feel about side gigs in this show is, you know, find something that you love. And, you know, as far as, you know, getting started in this, you don't have to, while you're saving your money, you can start learning how things work. How does Facebook Marketplace work to rent properties? How, what do the contracts look like? How do I advertise my place? What are the rents going for? What do people normally get for rent in the area that I want to buy houses on? See, I'm in Denver right now and, and buying a little two bedroom, one bathroom house, 700 square foot house for $300,000 that's not really that great of an idea anymore because the, the prices are too high to buy income real estate in Denver anymore. I have some, but I'm not buying any more. But if you look in some of the other markets that are emerging and growing, then you've got Vinny, Bob Rito, Vinny from Vegas. I love that guy. He is the funniest guy in Vegas. Even though I messed up his last name, Vinny, he, you're awesome. But uh, if we're buying some of these properties in these emerging markets, then we're buying in at a lower price. We're getting into duplexes that are $110,000, $130,000. And if we're setting up the LLCs and the partnerships the way that we want to, in good, solid structures, you get somebody that's familiar with taxes, you get somebody that's familiar with finances and money, and you're all saving money. You're encouraging each other, just like you were at a weight loss support group or any other kind of a, a group therapy where you're really helping each other, helping each other pay off your debt, encouraging each other to buy pieces of, of these little things that are going on. And... Um, one begets another that begets another that begets another because let's say you and your wife and, and your, your family is in a certain situation and you, you save up enough money to, to do $25,000 into your investment property that you want to go in on. Then all of a sudden that stream of income starts coming back and you're making 200 bucks a month off your $25,000 investment in this house then that 200 is going with the 200 that you were previously saving and one begets two in about this much time. And then two begets three in about this much time. And then three begets four in about this much time. And all of a sudden when you have five pieces of these corporations and they're streaming that money in, then five begets six and six begets seven, all of a sudden you're buying bigger pieces or you're buying one a quarter and then you truly have the freedom. And that's really what I want to do for the people that I work with, the people that I talk to, the people that I help. Um, I want to have the American family. I would like to have every single American family pay off all their debt. And I like to have them have at least one paid off house as a goal. And that's not necessarily the house that you live in. The house that you live in, you know, that's fine. But I would like a $100,000 house to be the screw my boss house. You know, if I have a, just a jerk of a boss who disrespects me or disrespects my wife, I want to be able to have that place to go and say, you know, we can just live in the rental. It's paid off and we'll figure out something else to do with the job, but we don't have to be beholden to this boss that wants to treat me like crap. And if you can do that, you don't, nor, you don't have to lose your job. It's the old Roman saying that it's not the fact that my friends help me that bring me comfort. It's the fact and the knowledge that I know that they would should I need them to. So moving into the rental isn't the thing that needs to happen to 
give you comfort. But you can tell your boss, look, you don't talk to me that way. You know, you talk to me with respect and you deal with me professionally or else I'm going to sue you. And if they say you're going to get fired, then you can tell them to go sit on it because you have other options. You don't have debt and you have this other income producing asset that you can live in. And then after, after the family has that one house, then you pay off your house. Now, all of a sudden, you're a self-contained unit with two houses, one right across the street from another. And even if you had to, you could live in the one house. And then every month on the 30th, you go collect the rent from the one across the street and then pay your light bill, your heat bill, your grocery bill, whatever bills you have working on those two houses. And that is how we build the generational wealth. And it's not just the money that we're concerned with because what a lot of people don't realize when we have this weight of all of this financial heavy burden of this debt and meeting these bills and my job and I didn't get my bonus and you would be astonished at how many times those thoughts come in to your mind and it's worry you're constantly worried even if you're not you know, consciously worrying about that. If there's a subconscious thought that comes in, what about the money? Oh God, yeah, we'll pay that. We'll, we're going to pay that money. And you know, you're constantly thinking about it through the day. And the only way you figure out how much it was bothering you is when you get it a race and you, you let it go. Now all of a sudden those, those thoughts come rushing in and you're like, no, I don't have to worry about that because we have plenty of money. We have, money in our emergency fund saved up. We have our income producing asset that's grinding away money that's building to another one. And immediately you're, you're, you don't go through that process. But what you do is when that thought comes in and that fear thought comes in, then you say, well, I'm fine. We're fine. Together, we're fine. The family is going to be fine until one day you have turned whatever your side gig is, into something that fills these batteries, these financial batteries up, these income producing assets that stream back at you and build you up. And then when it's time to retire, you don't have to ask somebody if it's time to retire. You know it's time to retire because you look at your little spreadsheet and you look at the money that is coming back at you and, uh, against your expenses. And then you get to decide like I have that you no longer are going to do things that you don't want to do. And that's a situation that I got has luckily put me in that I don't do things that I don't want to do. I only do jobs and work that I want to do that I'm passionate about. That's helping other people that make me feel good. And if I don't like doing it, I don't do it because I don't have to do it. And I would like everybody in the, that, that is listening to the sound of my voice, if you, if you listen to this on the iTunes broadcast, if you listen to it on, on YouTube, or if you're on this, this Facebook Live with me, if you're, if you're taking this thought journey with me, that uh, I wish for every single one of you to get free. PJ checks in saying, getting out from underneath debt changes your perspective on everything. It is freedom and opportunities will present themselves like never before. And that's, that's true that he's a wise man. And, uh, you know, he is a very astute business person and he is very wise with, uh, his, his financial steps and you're living a little bit below your means and getting all of that traction together. It frees your mind and, and, you know, you don't have to do what they tell you to do anymore. You are doing what you want to do but you've got to clear away that clutter first. I mean, you've got to clear away, uh, work away on the debt. And then you've got to, got to work on getting those horses hooked up to your wagon. And, 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 you know, sometimes it seems like it's insurmountable, but it's not. And I, and I guarantee you, once you start chipping away at that, at that big rock, the pieces start flying off of it. And then you get a plan and you can get with me, you can get, with anybody at Marketing Hope, uh, marketinghope.com, Hope for Homes, uh, Denver, 
Denver uh, Doug McGee. That's a that's a guy that knows what he's talking about. Um, Doug runs a uh, a group that mentors and supports men called the Realm, and uh, he is about helping people become more than uh, they can be by themselves. And if you if I don't know if there's any seats left, but I think that there's a a Realm event coming up that I'm going to go to. Uh, Doug invited me to, and I'm going to go to that event. If there's any more tickets, maybe Doug can put something in the uh, in the notes for us, and maybe you can sign up for that. If you're a man that's interested in, you know, going to that next level with your with your business, or um, it's a men's group, you ladies, I'm sure have your own groups and people, and I'd like some people to chime in. I'm sure there's some people out there that would love to have some ladies get together. And thank you for the uh, link, Doug. It's uh, December 5th. And uh, the link is in there. It's here in Denver. And I'm really looking forward to that event. Um, but it's about all of us helping each other. And that's really the, the power that happens in, in, you know, getting together with people and talking about what we're doing and helping the other guy, you know, with your experience and your strength that you have of, hey, you know, I did that. I climbed through that hole and believe me, it's a lot wider than you think it is. And, you know, when you're my age and you know, when I'm talking to the young men that I do the life coaching with every time I talk to them, especially if they're in their thirties or you're 35 and you're listening to me and I'm talking to you about stuff. I, I challenge each and every one of those guys that I'm talking to when I'm, when I'm working with them, I tell them the same thing. I want you to be, more rich than me. I want you to be wealthier than me. I want you to be able to do things with your time that I never got to. I'm 57 years old. By the time you're 50, I want you to be further than I was because I reached down and helped you when you're 30. And I gave you the plays out of my playbook. I told you what I did. I helped you not have to screw around with things that I screwed around with and make the mistakes that I made. And uh, I want everybody that's listening to me that's younger than me to be better than me when they're my age. And that's, that's what I get out of it. And uh, I'm also working on putting this show on KNUS. There's an opening on Saturday that uh, they just relieved the radio show host of his post over there. And I would like to do the Mark Hope show on Saturday from nine to noon. So if any of you guys that listen to this podcast would like to hear it on the radio, please call KNUS and request that they put the Mark Hope show on Saturday, nine to noon. And I'll even get up at nine o'clock to do the show in the studio. And uh, I hope that this helps. This show is a little bit of a riff. And uh, I just talked about the things that I really love to talk about. And that's you guys and your success and your journey with your money and you're saving your money and you're getting that debt off your back and going that next step to be a part of somebody that is buying and and running and managing income producing assets so that you could take control and it doesn't have to be the big guy it doesn't have to be someone else it can be you and your family and if you want to know how to get that done reach out to me on any of the different Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Mark Hope, Marketing Hope. And uh, if you'd like to get involved and you'd like to get involved in some of the projects that I'm involved in, we're always opening our doors, our, our projects to people that want to be involved. But you have to have a thirst for learning and you have to have the mind and the, and the heart of a teacher so that when you're getting help, you're helping somebody else. And if you have mechanical abilities, but you don't know about real estate, or if you have real estate abilities and you don't know how to paint things or fix things, we're coming together at Hope for Home and we're helping everybody realize that dream. And, and it doesn't have to be the elite people that have the money that control everything. It's all of us. And it's all about getting your hands dirty. And that's where the true charity is. You know, if you've ever done any charity that's meaningful at all, and it's not just writing a check. Whenever I just write a check to a charity, I, I feel good that I'm helping some people. But whenever I'm down there and I'm just 
helping the people do things. Like when I'm over at Adaptive Adventures and I'm actually making that work, I'm actually helping with the programming, I'm making things work, then uh, I, uh, it warms my heart. And uh, Doug McGee wants me to say more about Hope for Home. I, I will do another show about that. I will do a show about that. And that, that is a very special thing in my heart. Um, that is, that is an offshoot of the Hope Foundation where we, we try to do things, helping people every day. And, uh, it's one of my little side projects that, uh, I have, but, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys spending your time with me and, I, and I'm sorry that Daniel wasn't here and we'll, we'll give you a more complete show next Monday. He had to spend some time with his family that were here from, uh, Louisiana. And if you know me, you know that uh, it's family first for me. And, and my, my rule of importance and priorities are God, family, and then work. And uh, I can't be first, and, and I don't want to be second. But after that, um, my, my hobbies are making money and helping people, and, and, and it's enjoyable for me. And I, and I love this radio show. I love the ability to... Uh, take calls and help you guys. And thank you for listening and, and letting me share some of my ideas. Hopefully if somebody hears something and they're young and they clean themselves, you know, financially up and really get on the buzz and get excited, they will be one of those people that come up to me. And then every once in a while it does happen to me. And somebody says, you know, Mark, you changed my life. And I'm like, well, you know, I, what did I do? And they said, you just told me what to do. And you gave me the belief that I could do it. And, you know, of all the, the things that I've earned in my life, that that's the richest thing that I've ever been given is, is for somebody to tell me that their life has changed because I, you know, kind of showed them my mistakes. And uh, that's a heartwarming thing for me. So I appreciate all you guys. And thank you so much for tuning in. And next Monday, we'll be back with Daniel. And uh, we'll have another another episode of Mark Hope show, especially with you guys calling in. So thanks a lot. And PJ, you helped me a lot more than I ever helped you. So love you all. And if nobody told you they love you today, I love you. And there isn't a damn thing you can do about it.